Hello and welcome to my knitting and crochet a Yarnatopia. My name is Kim and today we're going to be doing a flip through of the Crochet Southwest Spirit book. This is a book by Susan Kennedy and there's over 20 bohemian patterns inspired by the American Southwest. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for clicking on the thumbnail and checking out this video. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and you probably know that I love boho and I love plants and the whole nature thing, vibe, whatever you want to call it. And so when I saw this book going up for pre-order on Amazon, I did not hesitate at all to pre-order it. I even put a post up on my community tab with a link so you can pre-order it as well. And for those of you who did, thank you so much for using my affiliate link. I am so grateful for you. I will also leave that same affiliate link down in the um, description of this video in case you would like to shop from it. When you shop my affiliate link, nothing extra gets charged to you, but I do make some coinage that I use to fund this channel, but we're going to dive into this. I did go in, as you can see, and cover up all the actual patterns to avoid any kind of copyright issues. But this is a book I think you're really, really going to enjoy. And that's what inspired me to do this video. I learned to knit and crochet from books. And so if this is something that you enjoy, this format, then please let me know by leaving a comment. And then we can look at some other books that I own. So this is the paperback book. It does retail for $16.99 in the UK and $24.99 in the US. And it says on the back, fill the freedom of the wide open spaces and deep turquoise skies of the American Southwest as you work this unique collection of patterns. Right away, when you look at the front cover, this thing is what kind of sold me on this book. I saw this cover and I'm like, that is one of the coolest blankets ever and I need it in my life. <laughs> so I love the colors that are used. I love that pop of yellow. I love the geometrical shapes. It's just super pretty and I'm even feeling the fringe even though typically I'm not a fringe person because we are a household of four cats and if you have cats you know that fringe and cats are like arch nemesis it's usually a disaster when they come together but the book is broken up into sections and the whole entire book is just covered with amazing photos of the designs that are in here. The photography is just stunning and it really, I think, captures the colors used and the designs of the items. They're all crochet. The first part of the book though is kind of the introduction, which you see here, and she goes into the inspiration of the book and then she also talks about Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado and then she also talks about textile traditions of the Southwest with again gorgeous photos. I really like the font that is not on a solid white background but more creamy so it's a little bit softer on the eyes. I appreciate things like that. She talks about Navajo sheep herding today and yarn that is local as well as covers things like fiber festivals but again like you have all these vibrant photos and and things to look at as you look through the pages it's really a really nice book just to have as a coffee table book to spark conversation not to mention the amazing patterns there's a tools and materials page she does tell you the type of yarn and the brand that she uses and she even gives you some alternates, which I love. But always remember, if you are making something and you don't have access to the yarn that they use in the pattern, you can use yarnsub.com and you can type in the yarn that they use and it will give you a list of yarns that you can use in its place. And it even gives you a percentage of like the best match and why it's a great match for you. She does obviously love clover more hooks unless they were just a sponsor of this video. Clover, if you want to sponsor any of my videos, feel free to. But I do love Clover hooks as well. So, And she even has highlighter tape and we know I love highlighter tape because I've talked about it before on this channel. So the first section is these simple stitches and some of these patterns in here, like I don't see them as being simple stitches, 
but they are, but they have such a huge impact, which I think is one of the amazing things about fiber arts. They can look so intense and it's just really not so when you really get into it. But again, look at all this, these photos are just gorgeous. So the first pattern, she even has skill levels at the top of the section and each pattern is laid out like this. So you have this introductory layout that has what you're making, a little bit about it and some photos and it tells you the skill level. So this is the Rio Grande striped towels and I love the photography that they did here with the different rainbow colors. And she talks about Rio Grande weaving traditions. And you can see an up close picture of the actual item, which I think a lot of books neglect that, but I'm a very visual person. So if I'm doing a pattern and I'm having a hard time kind of understanding where it's going in the directions, I like to have a good clear photo to look at as a key, so to speak. And a lot of books don't have that and she does. But again, she's got gorgeous photos here. Then you turn the page and Again, you have the layout all the way through the book where she has all the supply list on your left hand side. It is clearly indicated by a different color of the page, so it's easy to find. It's easy to reference. She talks about the yarn that she used and most importantly, she gives you exact yardage per color yarn. This is huge for me because I like to use scraps. And a lot of patterns will just say you need 365 yards of color A, color B, color C. But then when you start working the pattern, you only need like 60 yards of color C and maybe 25 of color B. And so you just bought this full skein of yarn that you, when you could have just dove into your stash and used what you have and been a little bit more resourceful. So I love that that tidbit is there because it's so important. And then she even shows you that, hey, I used this yarn. And then these towels, she used lily sugar and cream. And she talks about the hook she used and the gauge. And lily sugar and cream is something that's accessible to everyone. I know here in the US, because any Walmart has it. And I love that she used yarns that are easy to obtain by anyone. That is something also that speaks to my heart. And then each one of these little layout sections, you're gonna see pattern notes that she has at the top before she starts getting into directions. But then again, you have these great photos of the item that you're making. The next thing is a artesian basket. Again, a skill level one. We have the same layout where it goes over the kind of just of why it's there. And a couple of great pattern or photos of the pattern. And then the next page, again, we have our layout with your materials list, the pattern notes at the top, and also she has these little doodles. I love doodles. I am a doodler like crazy. When I'm sitting there and I cannot focus, I'll just let my pen do whatever it wants to do and doodle. And I would like to think that that's how she approached these doodles. If this is her artwork, I don't know. I didn't really read through to find out, but I think that's just a way that we just process stuff. And so when I saw that, I was immediately, I don't know, touched that that was in here. So like this bag uses, or this basket uses any yarns from fingering to bulky weight. She talks about the other materials that you're gonna need, which is the strap or the handles, again, your hook size. And she gives the dimension for the small or the large and the directions are for the small or the large. And then we have our first wrap. So this is the Cozy Yagwai wrap. And this is really, really pretty. It's this gray base wrap with kind of a reddish orange ombre stripe going on to it with some yellows. But again, I like how it has information about it and the clear photos. And then we go into our supply list, pattern notes, and then the pattern. This is also a very pretty, it's just a basic, simple stitch but sometimes that's all you need. And you let the yarn speak and the pattern itself. So this is the blanket that is on the cover. And we're just gonna pause right here because this is only a skill level two. It looks like it would just be this very daunting thing, but apparently it's not. It says that the fridge blanket is a soothing geometric design. Diamonds are a 
common motif in European, Middle Eastern, and Asian textiles, as well as in the Southwest. In the Navajo, Appalachian, and Hopi traditions, the diamond symbolizes the four winds, the four elements of the earth, fire, air, and water, freedom, eternity, unity, and balance. Love that. But I love this color palette that she used as well. And so when I saw this, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is just, it's me. But it's super pretty. Look at that. I do like the fringe. I didn't think I would like the fringe, but I do. So again, we have our supply list over here, pattern notes, and I want to do, leave a couple of these uncovered because this is how she shows you how to make some of these stitches. They're very clear photos, and I just wanted to point that out. We are skipping over these two pages because it's nothing but pattern. She talks about fringing, and then on this blanket, she gives you an optional fringe, a macrame fringe, which I appreciate that she gives you options. Her charts that she used are color charts and they are very, very easy to read. I also appreciate the fact that all of her charts are on this side of the book and it makes it easy that if you wanted to photocopy for your own purposes, don't ever photocopy and hand out patterns because it's copyrighted material, but if you wanted to do a photocopy of for yourself and blow it up or just carry that one part around in the crochet bag. It makes it easy to do that without having to fight the center of the book. And I just notice and enjoy things like that. And then we go into this knot cushion. And I'm going to be honest, when I first saw this, I did not know what this was. It was like weird at first. I'm like, that's a weird pillow. <laughs> but it's a cushion. It's a like a sitting cushion. And it's actually kind of cool. It has a very cool construction. And I can always appreciate things that have a cool construction. And you can see her sitting on it right here. And she talks about the supplies. And it is made from a bulky or chunky white yarn. But she gives you an alternative as Red Heart, Red Heart Super Saver or Stylecraft. But she made this in Knit Picks and Billow. Again, she uses yarns that is easy to access from really anywhere in the U.S. And I'm sure there's great alternatives to find overseas. But I was like thinking that would be a super cool a stash buster to maybe use like different colors of Red Heart and hold it with a solid to make it more cohesive. But that would probably be something that I might actually make one day as odd as it is because I'm constantly sitting in the floor. Right now, yeah, I'm sitting in the floor. I just like sitting in the floor. The next we go into our textured stitches. So textured stitches is a wonderful medium for creative work because it is endless variety of colors and textures. Once we have selected the yarn, we can create infinite variations and in textures with just slight changes to our usual single and double crochet stitches. There's some really cool things in this. This is probably not my favorite section though, but there's still some really cool patterns. I do think this section's a little bit different in that all of her other sections, as you'll notice as we flip through this, are full of color and life. And some of these are very, very neutral, neutral palette. I think that's why maybe I'm not as drawn to them you know, easily to change the color. But this is the dungaroo pillows, and they're just a geometric kind of pillow cover. And again, supply list, notes. And then we have the blah pot rug and pillow. I do think the rug is super cool. I don't know how I feel about spending the time to crochet a rug. Like, I, there's some really cool crocheted rugs out there, so I don't know. But I do like the pillows of it. The pillows would be fun. And you can do them in fun colors and add some texture. I really love that chair. Uh, popcorn stitches. And there's a huge chart here with a nice easy to read key. And then we go into this Dreamer's Path wrap. So this is very monotone, but I think it's still really, really pretty. It uses like these two blue colors. And I kind of want to see it done, though, in something with a super high contrast to make the design in this pop. I understand why it was done in a monotone, but I just think it would be really fun to do it in a high contrast. And she just used Rowan hand-knit cotton yarn for this. And then we had these blankets. These kind of threw me off because I think of more of a stole for these because they're kind of like long rectangles and not really blankety. Because when I think of blankets, I think of like a circle or square blanket, but that's just me. But they still have a really pretty design on them. 
they make kind of really cool curtains like in a, a craft room to allow some light in but not to allow too much light in I do love this blanket and this is also more of a two-tone one-tone kind of you know blanish blanket but I do love the greens I love that dark green with that lighter green and the design on it is just super super pretty and if you follow this channel for a while, you know that I love cactuses. So the next page on this one just has the supply list pattern notes, and it's mostly all pattern. So fortunately, there's not a lot to see on that page. I do want to show you this. Again, she does use some great photos to show you how to work the different parts. And then she shows this, which is the same blanket, but in pops of color. And I wanted to point that out, how amazing that looks. So we'll fold the page back. Same thing, but just changing the color really changes the overall look of it. Like this is super, this is gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, but this is, that's a whole lot of fun. I think I would probably get really bored making something like this and just a dual tone. But something like this keeps me interested a little bit more and longer. Okay, so this is kind of crazy to me like I like this but I also know that my cats would terrorize this pillow this is called the bear's ears fringe pillow and it's called that because of you know the the bear's ears on it and it's super cool and I think it'll be super cool in a house in a space in general but I just have a feeling that my cats would so hunt that down and destroy it and she talks about how to do the fringe, which I thought that even though I don't want to make this per se pillow, I think that's a really good lesson to learn for something in the future. So then we have the Southwestern Tapestry section. And this is kind of where things also get exciting for me because of all the color. I love all that together. It's very um, eye candy. We go into the river. Raider or Ridge wall hangings and this is something that I seriously want to make. I had won some of that Hobie Amigo and I thought about making this with that but I only got three colors so I don't know and it was discontinued but it's kind of that watercolor. I think if I can track down some more colors of that off of Ravelry or from somebody else's D stash that would be super cool to do this in because the way the yarn is dyed or find something similar but I really love this. I love even the smaller version and I like that she gives you an option that you can do a bigger version or these little small bite size so if I use Malabrigo, I may have to do a, a bite size one just for yarn cost. But I mean, they're just so pretty. And again, the next two pages on this are nothing but patterns. So we're just going to skip over that, which leads us to the Land of Enchantment blanket and pillow. So this is a combo set. And again, this is done in a, a two-tone, kind of really neutral color palette. But they're very pretty, and it'll be something very easily to beef up the color on. And really make it eye-popping. You can see a better photo of it here. And again, I love the, the doodles. Valcinto Blanket. This is another super cool blanket. It's a grayish base with like these different blues and whites that make it look like they pop but this is super pretty and I love the stacked tassel and she talks about how to make that in here so no worries she teaches you how to do that as well and then we get into something else that I want to make there's several patterns in this book that I would that I'm going to make that I want to make so when I look at a book and I try to evaluate is the book worth the price in this case there's more than two or three patterns then yes I consider that worthy of buying this pillow and tote are super super cool I love the color detail you can kind of see it here on the side and it does have some tassels but I love the style of this it's kind of like boho in a way I don't know I just love everything about it I love the palette and all. More great colors. Oh, look at that. So pretty. And then we go to Wind River Weighted Blankets. I love how she does the color palette here. This is another super, super cool blanket. 
but I do want to point out how she used these lighter um, cooler colors versus the darker warmer colors and the difference it makes in the look of the blanket I'm more drawn into cooler colors I used to be more of a warmer palette but as I've gotten older I can definitely tell a change in my taste when I see things like this so I'm interested to know, leave in the comments, are you more of a cooler palette person or a warmer palette person? So then we have the Canon Moon blanket. This is another like, oh, that is so cool blanket. It's a rainbow. It goes from black, almost burgundy red to lighter red to orange, yellow, green, blues, purples, a dark, dark blue, and then a a, a little bit more true blue it's just super gorgeous and i am here for the colors this is the globe trekker again another blanket that i can definitely see myself making if you are a throw person and you love designs like this then this book may be right up your alley and you should really consider giving it a go because there are some incredible designs and then we have our technique section. She goes over abbreviations and basic stitches with some photo tutorials, borders and fringes. She talks about all the different ones and how to do them, which I can really appreciate because you have all your resources in one book. She talks about how to add fringe, how to add the macrame fringe, which is super boho and cool. And then she talks about how to do the stacked tassels and even how to do tapestry crochet. I mean, I really appreciate all the information that she has put into one book for us. So you don't have to spend time trying to research all this stuff and figure out how to do it. You can just look in your one stop shop. She even talks about ball maintenance so your yarn doesn't get tangled. Mosaic crochet. And then she has this whole section for blocking and finishing. There is not many books that do sections like this and I think it's sad. There is a whole world of people out there who do not block their things. And if you're one of them, that's okay. But maybe considering doing it if you're using a yarn that's not acrylic. Because you'd be surprised how it can really even out your stitches and give your finished product a final touch of finishedness. We're going to go with that being word, finishedness. And she talks about how to weave your ends in so you do not have to worry about them coming out. You always want to leave enough end in to weave in so they don't pop out later on and then snip them. And then she goes into her suppliers about the author and then there are some more books by the same publisher. This journey, Crochet Journey, is actually on my wish list on Amazon. It is another one of the books that I want. Because again... I love books. Hope you've enjoyed this flip through of this book. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Again, look at the description of this video for links to the designer's Ravelry page, um, my affiliate link to Amazon where you can purchase it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and hit that little bell notification so you can see other fun content like this. Click here.